Have you been to the Dolby Theater before? I know you're an Oscar voter, but have you actually been I to this theater? I have not. This should be my first time. Hello. How are we? All right? You'll see a blue chair in the front row. We upholstered it just for you. I'm glad you got that memo. <laughs> Chiwetel, you have been acting since your teens. Was there a moment of clarity, of inspiration, that you thought, this is the thing for me? I remember being in an English class on a kind of, you know, on a wet Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we were doing Henry IV Part I. I was, I was bored out of my mind. And then there was like a little bit of Henry IV Part I, which was just a monologue in it, that was so inspirational, you know, just about people's lives. And, and you know, he was a, a young man, and was running around with a kind of odd crowd, but um, had this feeling that, um, that all of the pressures that he was under could amount to something else later on. And it's just that idleness of adolescence sometimes is like that, and not knowing quite what your place is in the world. And, you know, I felt like I was in that state. And, uh, and, I, and it felt like this person was speaking to me a little bit, you know. And, um, uh, and that was kind of amazing. So I thought I'd discovered Shakespeare, you know. <laughs> Uh, and so anyway, that led me down to the, the theatre, and then I um, auditioned for school play, and that was the beginning. So when you think back to something like Amistad, which was your first feature film that Steven Spielberg put you in, did you think, wow, this is kind of a moment to revel in, or did you think this is just the beginning of something even larger? It was so beyond my expectation as an, as an actor. Um, I was uh, 19, 18, 19, and uh, I went along as kind of audition practice, you know, without any kind of expectation of even possibly getting the part. So when I did, I just thought that I'd just completely overshot myself, you know, and that I'd have to somehow find out how to do all the stuff that I would have missed, you know, by um, just sort of immediately coming out to Hollywood and making a massive film. But uh, at the same time, you know, so, I was so precocious in a way that I, um, that I felt like I could handle it or something, or I felt comfortable within it in a very weird way, that it's only years later that I have much more neurosis about <laughs> doing a job. You had a lot of belief in yourself. Was there someone else who took a chance on you as a young person or really believed in you that you can look back and think, thank goodness I had this person in my life? Well, so many. I mean, you know, we had a great, it was a terrific, Dulwich College is my school, and it has a terrific uh, theatre department, which actually traced back to Shakespeare and Shakespearean times, because the school was founded by the first director of Shakespearean plays. So there was always like a large tradition of theatre there. And when I went over to the National Youth Theatre, and, uh, you know, there's a huge list of the alumni, which include, you know, Daniel Craig and Helen Mirren and Michael Caine and so on. Um, there were always people sort of growing up before I was 20 that were, had been real champions for me and my uh, working life and my passion to, to be an actor. And then in general, how has this whole experience for you been since 12 Years a Slave premiered at Telluride in Toronto? It's been very exciting, it's been thrilling. You know, you have a hope when you're making a film and you know, that you're, that you're passionate about, that you're deeply passionate about, that when that gets out there and it gets to an audience, people respond to that. And the response has been um, really amazing and so I couldn't, I'm thrilled. Mm -hmm.